distribute 3D grid eye expressions allows to distribute a set of 3D layers in 3D space in a regular fashion. And in this uh, sample project I have already imported here a lot of layers and I've already called the first one first and this is because the first of the layers I want to distribute I always need to name so I need to tell uh, the eye expression which one is the first one so we just put in the name here first and you can see already that all these layers are 3D layers and they are yeah, currently quite large yeah, so these are 1920 times 1080 uh, pixels and my composition here is only 720 pixels so they are much larger and they are all positioned here and uh, if we apply this to all of them let's see what happens so there are quite a bit of layers therefore it takes a while and you can see now they are distributed here yeah and it's such that the second layer compared to the first one is shifted to the right and then the next one is again 100 shifted to the right and the next one again 100 shifted to the right and so this is the distance in the x direction and then once five layers are next to each other yeah one two three four five then the next row is started which is 100 uh, pixels below the first one and then once we have five rows the next uh, plane so to speak in spe CD spa 3D space is created 100 uh, pixels below the first one. So here you have the distance between the different layers and here there um, the size of the grid. So let's make this here larger. So I said the, uh, the layers are wide 1920 and their height is 1080. So if we do this and apply it again uh, yeah, okay, we should select the property to which we want to apply it, so we just select all of them here and hit apply. And now you can see they are nicely distributed one next to the other, Yeah, although you cannot see something yet. And you can see here you have a first l uh, uh, plane, so to speak, and then behind here you can already see a second plane. Yeah. And this plane, this first plane is currently one, two, three, four, five next to each other and five below each other because this is five and this is five. If we set this, for example, to four and this also to four and go now, um, select all of them and hit apply. Then this grid will become smaller. You're only four next to each other and four below each other and therefore they start here already a third row yeah okay currently you cannot see very much here and so what we therefore should do is we should um, add a new null object layer new null object and call this here parent and parent all of these here control a all except the parent are parented to this one now we can see the first layer jumped in place here uh, to the null, yeah. The first layer is now centered here to the null, and now we can use this null position. Ah, actually, we should make it 3D, and now we can use this null position to move forward in space. Let's say thousand pixels, and now everything gets smaller, so it should be much more than this. Yeah, like this. Let's zoom in here a bit and maybe also move here a bit in x direction. Uh, zero, minus 500, just try a bit. Now uh, we can also pick it here and shift it. Uh, this is a bit slow because I've just a two core machine with four gigabytes of RAM and so many layers here now and um, the screen recording Camtasia going on in the background. Okay, but I think you can already imagine <coughs> what what is here. Now we can we could increase here this distance. Another thing I could also do is just scale down these layers maybe a bit. Yeah, take all their scale and go to say sixty percent or so. And what you now can see is bef behind the first row, there's already the second one showing up. Yeah, which is hundred below the 
behind the first one. And if we go here, for example, to 1000 <coughs> and reapply it to all of them. <coughs> now you can see uh, the layers showing up behind the first ones. Yeah? And um, another thing is now, um, assume we want to animate a camera movement through these layers and <coughs> we want to get the impression as if there would be much more layers than are actually there. Yeah? So what I want to do is that I want layers from the beginning to disappear and reappear at the end. What you can use for this is the layer offset. Yeah? So you can have a layer offset in, in, in many dimensions. Um, let's say we have here a layer offset of 1 in x direction. This means this first row here, yeah, this one, this row disappears and appears here behind the last one again. Um, let's apply this to see the change. Yeah. Layer offset of 1 means all these layers here will disappear and reappear here. Meaning if you want to make a camera pen going in this direction, whenever something left here the screen, you can use this offset here to go into this direction. And similarly we can go in Z dimension. So we set it here to also to 1. This means this first plane here of layers will disappear and will be placed behind the last one. I'm going to apply this also. And now notice here the very first row. Uh, or the very zack. You see everything looked now a bit smaller. Yeah. And you can see here at the very end here new layers uh, have been um, added. To make sure that they are in that space here added at the correct point, uh, make sure that you give here the grid size correctly. So currently it is it is such that we have here in total um 49 layers. One of these 49 is this one, so in a total 48. Yeah? 40, 48 and 4 times 4, so 16 are here in one such plane. Yeah? 4 times 4, these are 16 in one plane, so we can see, say divided by 16, this is 3. Yeah? So in total we have here 3 complete rows of <coughs> or three complete planes of layers. So the grid size should be three in that dimension, which means when you have here an offset of one, the first plane is placed behind the third one. Yeah? Otherwise, if you enter here larger numbers, you will get a kind of a gap between the, the lay or the plane that jumps behind and, and the other earlier ones. Um, okay. Another thing that I want to show you is, okay, if you want to animate this offset here over time, which is of course the main interesting thing, um, with other things you always create a uh, control by selecting here the parent, just the layer, and clicking on this linking symbol. But since this is a 3D property, in this case it doesn't work. Yeah, if you click it, it just says, please select a property that you want this variable to link with. And this is because um, it doesn't support the create of such 3D controllers because I think they have just been introduced in CS 5.5. At least they do not work with uh, CS 4, which is um, should also be or is compatible with I expression. So I show you the way how to do it by co creating some like fake controller on your own. And this is we just add a new layer, a new solid, and call this offset control. Can be any layer, by the way, can also be a null object. I make it invisible and make it 3D. And now I abuse, so to speak, its position as the layer offset. Uh, I set this here, for example, to 0, 0, 0. And now I link it here. Now this offset is taken from these three values. So with these three components here, you can now control how to shift this layer in this direction and in, in X and Y in any direction. Okay, we select here all the layers and hit apply. And now we can, you can see it now jumped back in its original position. And now we can go, can keyframe it for example and say uh, from here to here it should get a Z offset of 25. Yeah, and now with 25, you can see it jumped here way behind. 
And if we do a RAM preview of it, you can see now here we have the first row. And now well, the, 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 the first is the disappearing, they are placed behind again, and now the first are again placed behind. Yeah, step by step, the first plane is taken and placed behind the last one. And this is very nice if you have some camera movement that moves forward. Yeah, then you can make the picture, so to say, move with the camera such that you can travel 10,000 layers and do not need 10,000 layers, but just repeat the same layers again and again and just get the impression that there would be so many because the layers that you, that you generate basically travel with the camera. Okay, then um, there are other options apart from this layer offset and this is this use keyframe value as offset but I'm not going to show it here because I described it already in the distribute 2D grid so look there if you want to know any details the idea is enable it and make sure uh, or if you want to use it enable it and make sure that the positions of your layers are all set to zero and then you can keyframe your movement on top of the position positioning in the grid and then the next thing I want to show, is the last thing actually, is this wiggle parameters. This is also the same as with all the other distribute I expressions. So the idea is if you want the elements not to be very precisely, accurately placed here, but you want to have a bit of noise, you can just change the amplitude. Let's say we want them to be uh, 300 pixels off on average. Yeah? So I select all layers again, accept these control layers and reapply it. And then you will see that all the layers are placed a bit off. Yeah, like this. So they are in principle in this grid, but all displaced a bit, namely by at most 300 pixels. If there should be some wiggling over time, really, that is, so this is now a constant offset. Yeah. So if you go here to another place, it's exactly the same, except that, of course, now uh, the layers are shifted in uh, so the because I animated here this offset control, but whether I look at this point here or 20 frames later here, um, it's all exactly the same. Yeah, uh, if you want them to animate really over time, so maybe let's get rid of these keyframes here uh, and instead. So now I can go to this layer or whatever layer I want to my to be my controls on. Click on this frequency link symbol here and say yes please create me a controller for frequency and then i select it again and say yes also create me a controller for amplitude and now i have on this thing here these two nice effects to control the frequency and the amplitude then i can so for example say at the beginning it should be really a huge offset of 10,000, and yeah it's currently nothing happens because i didn't apply the i expression with these changes yet so you need to always reapply if you have not auto apply here enabled. So I select them all. And hit apply. So note I didn't select here the scale but just the layer and then it knows it should be applied to the position. And now you can see everything is offset by this huge amount of 10,000. And then I can for example set another keyframe here and say here the amplitude should not be uh, so much but should be zero and this leads to all the elements nicely fading into their position oh now I of course forgot to to keyframe this so let's do it again and I just hit the uh, caps lock key to uh, avoid automatic updating. So here we want to an amplitude of zero and here's something huge. Oops. Caps lock 10,000. Then we can maybe also add easy ease to this one. Yeah. So we go here and say animation keyframe assistant and easy ease in such that we have a smooth transition to there. Yeah, and now you have this nice animation here where um, all the elements 
are nicely animating into their position and note how easy this really was here. Yeah? So we really just animated the amplitude of this wiggle here to make all the layers nicely move into their uh, place, whereas it this would be a horrible amount of work if you would try to animate all this by keyframes manually. Yeah? So very convenient to use this wiggle for this kind of thing. And then in this uh, preview video, you have also seen that in between, uh, according to the music, there was some wiggling in the layers. And this can be done in exactly the same way. Yeah? Just animate the amplitude and then also the frequency to get it some, some wiggling over time. Okay, so this is all I wanted to say about the Distribute 3D Grid. So very nice to arrange layers in space, use the layer offset to make to get the impression that there would be actually much more layers than there actually are. Yeah? When you move your camera, just use the offset to, uh, s to make your layers follow your camera. And with wiggling, a great thing to move elements in place and move them out, or to just add some randomness or a little bit less regular pattern to the distribution of your layers.